Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be BSL Season 14 Hasu League Group C winners match between Tucson and Kiko. Bottom left hand corner, we have Tucson starting as the green Terran. Three o'clock location, we have Kiko starting as the yellow Terran. I want to give a shout out to all of the Twitch streamer, the Twitch streamer, the Twitch viewers right now. Candy Diggit Dada. Brast is out there. They're helping me with my audio. Let me know if the audio came out well on YouTube and if anybody is an audio expert and in particular knows how to adjust EQ or presets or anything along those lines, let me know. One of those things I've been wanting to do for a bit, and I guess I'm trying to make it like a, a thing for myself. <laughs> anyway, this is going to be on Monopoly. The reason it is called such is because you have the 10 mineral patches that are inside the main for both players, which means you have a little bit more resources to work with. I, and it, I'm not sure this is going to turn out for a TVT. It could just be an absolute slugfest. Because the the natural expansion is wide open. You can see where you can end up with vulture run buys quite frequently. But also beyond that, I mean, let me just zoom back. Actually, I forget how to, is it F6? One of these, yeah, F6, if you guys know. But you just, look how wide open this map is. You just have huge open areas on this map. You can see where usually in a TVT, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna close off this area and hold that key point. But you can see where there's just two big open areas to try to cover and it's just not going to happen so you really have to play more defensively <laughs> it's just i don't know it could it's gonna it could be a crazy slugfest of a tvt crazy slugfest of a tvt we'll see how it plays out and especially between these two guys who are very evenly matched so we have refinery a little bit earlier there from kiko let's see if tucson actually opts to go for Pastor Commands, I don't know, he's dropped Refinery as well. Last match, I mean, it was dead even for what felt like the first 10 minutes of the entire match. It was just having the mines down. Really, that's what it was that won it for, uh, for Tucson, it was just having the mines in place so he knew to rush forward. Tucson looks like this time is going to get the first scout off. I don't know that Pico's gonna be able to get the scout off. First Marine is being produced here from Tucson, and that Marine should be on the ramp before his SCV is making rounds. And also, this is critical, this first... Well, never mind. For a second there, I thought this SCV was going to be able to get a factory block. Might have delayed that factory by a half second, but every moment counts. But now that SCV is gonna go ahead and back out return to home base. We'll, we'll actually see if it returns to home base or if it just waits for the additional scout. On a map like Monopoly, I feel like returning to home, knowing that you have the 10 mineral patches, the Mayan Adder, returning to home base might be the, the favored thing to do. Marine holding the ramp, Pico wandering up, and he is in fact boxed out. He's going to have to hold his SCV here. Hang around the natural expansion to see what happens. Marine's pushing forward. The barracks already lifting off and scouting now for Kiko. And as far as factory timings, looks like it's just going to be slightly ahead there for Kiko, but he's also down an SCV overall. Marine's pushing that SCV back. And now the Marine's going to go ahead and hold the forward position. So right now, information advantage is to, to Tucson. So Kiko's going to have to play more defensively. Tucson dropping his natural expansion just about the exact same moment. And again, this is looking like the clone matchup. Except Tucson being a little bit more diligent with scouting potentially. So this SCV able to wander in, go ahead and confirm that natural expansion. And we'll see if the same thing is going to happen on the opposite side from Kiko. Kiko holding up right this second. Also not drawing that SCV back. First Vulture making its way out. Just going to probably hold the natural expansion. Previous match, Tucson ended up really winning the match because he dropped those additional factories that were needed. And a little bit of a... I think that might have been a misclick on Kiko's part. Or maybe he just built the factory a little bit too close to the wall. But now dropping that machine shop as his se second factory underway. And it looks like immediately we're seeing a starport from Tucson. So Tucson looks like a vulture got that SCV kill on the edge. The Marines, just Tucson on top of everything here. The Marines immediately engaging this barracks as it's floating into the main to confirm. And if it can get all the way to the corner, it looks like a wraith being produced. This is going to be absolutely huge. So let's see the, the barracks. So currently it's confirming the natural expansion. It looks like it might wander up to that upper left corner, but Tucson going for early Wraith play. I thought he was going to go for an early dropship here. 
this might pay out for him because Kiko has no anti-air right now. His only anti-air is these two marines, which are very easily going to get wiped out. And he has no idea of what's going on otherwise. He just has confirmation of the command center. However, I he's got to think something might be up upon seeing just two vultures on the front door. Because usually you'd expect more troops. So Siege Tank making its way out to the natural expansion. First Wraith making its way across the map, potentially to get SCV kills. It's not going to have Cloak. But that might force an additional marine or well can't force additional marine there's no anti-air so tucson see how many scv kills these man he's going to be able to rack up with this pico pushing forward looking to engage behind so he's like okay you're out of position a little bit distracted so having some trouble microing one wraith kill already we'll see if that starts to mount an armory being dropped so basically kiko's just going to have to sit here and a bit of miss micro now by Tucson, he was flat engaging on an SCV, wasn't paying attention, so that Wraith, Wraith eating a lot of damage. No cloak to support this, so it's just going to be straight Wraith. Two Wraith can take two Marines. So, a lot of disruption. Pico saying, okay, well, maybe you have inferior troops on the front, but Tucson anticipating this, already sealing his front door. So, Siege Tank's already there. Several vult Vultures taken out. We got two Wraith kills. And Tucson now up in the worker count, up in the positional count. The vultures can go ahead and wander around the map. Wondering if there's going to be a mine upgrade behind this. This is actually where having mines might be advantageous just to try to plant as many mines as possible. Get some map control as quickly as possible. Looks like mines already finished. So Kiko on top of it. Barracks going to land at the 3 o'clock location. Nothing to defend it, unfortunately. So it is going to die and need to be rebuilt. Two Goliaths being produced help deal with those additional two race control tower being dropped and an initial two factories being plopped down now as a follow-up and actually with these three siege tanks i think they can just kind of walk forward into these mines and sometimes do some mine sweeping if tucson opted to do so however knowing there's all those vultures knowing this is a little bit of a wider map i don't know that i would really want to risk it at this stage of things missile turret on the front missile turret going ahead and defending the factories from these wraith. I'm not even sure that these missile turrets are more of a precautionary thing than anything. Maybe a bit of an overcommitment. One wraith looks like it's going to get wiped out. Second wraith taking a lot of damage. So the potential vision control. Ooh, just one hit left. Lucky to escape. So despite all that harassment, Tucson might end up in a scenario here where he ends up getting contained and boxed into two bases. Which will open up Kiko to go ahead and grab his third. Three siege tanks, four siege tanks, five siege tanks moving forward. Honestly, it still looks like there's just superior amounts of troops down here for Tucson as I say that. But getting engaged heavily, Kiko really pressing this front. Now realizing that he doesn't have the troops to do it. Going to go ahead and back off. Some comsat being dropped so the tanks can go ahead and clear these mines. If they're, yeah, if they're just a little bit careful about it and they're not engaging... The additional troops underneath. You can see the vultures nearby looking to just sweep under this. Ooh, that siege tank's not long for life. That Goliath lasted forever. I expected that Goliath to get splatted much, much, much more rapidly. So as things settle, Tucson going ahead and getting some scouting with these wraith. The wraith eating some combat damage. It looks like one of them getting taken off, taken out again. One siege tank is against the superior siege tank count. So this is, yeah, kind of the tentative point of the map. But Kiko is saying, okay, well, at least I'm putting pressure on you. I'm going to go ahead while you're worrying about your front door. I'm going to grab my third immediately. And that's a very aggressive, very brave play by Kiko. Potentially risky. Let's see if these Wraith eventually sneak out that direction. This is what I was talking about in that TVT where there's just a lot of area to cover. The Vulture is trying to swing from the north and apply pressure there to gain mid-game advantage of just getting that third up a little bit more rapidly. On other maps, this would be a little bit stronger, but because of the additional minerals, I feel like it's a little bit less of a strong play on this map. Tucson slowly now moving forward to go ahead and grab his third. Unfortunately, sending out vultures piecemeal, so they're eating a little bit more damage. Well, as I say that, another vulture getting piecemeal worked out there. Three on three, Tucson wanting to get to this upper right hand corner. There's already a vulture there to potentially defend, but that SCV most certainly going to get wiped out. That might delay the command center briefly if they can just get a suicide dive. 
drawing in now. There are two SCV here. One gone. The second one taking damage, and it's going to be close. It looks like it does get wiped out. So going to delay just a sliver of time there. Two machine shops down, by the way. A starport coming up for Kiko. He's got three factories. Five factories are here for Tucson, so he's going to have superior troop count. And with that superior troop count, seeing that third up, he's pressing into Kiko. So Kiko, yeah, just really overextending. Inferior troop count, trying to grab that earlier third. He's behind in the overall unit count, but if he can just hold this, looks like he's already got mining. Unfortunately, the SCV is going to do uh, some distance action. Might be able to sneak back into this, but right now Kiko's problem is, is he's running at an inferior factory count. He hasn't tacked on additional factories. To really counter it he is getting plus one weapons there's the fourth factory now but he really needs to on three on three command centers he needs to just drop a slew of factories right now and start pressing things from here tucson grabbing his nine o'clock base and starting to siege up so tucson right now with superior factories has some drop ships out and with the superior troop count i'm assuming he's going to be able to go ahead and drop this upper right hand base without too much trouble Another Vulture able to sneak by. There's two Siege Tanks and a Goliath here. So that's not going to get a lot accomplished. But there's a lot of territory to cover right now. For Kiko and just not enough troops in my opinion to do it. He's got what? Three Siege Tanks versus more, way more than that. The only advantage here is with the way the map is structured. Tucson can't feel confident without a ton of map vision. Which he doesn't have because he didn't get a lot of mines planted to the north. To really pull out his troops and dedicate them one direction or another. However, three dropships, first of all, potentially going to just allow him to drop all over. I mean, one turret isn't sufficient to go ahead and defend all of this, and that's going to be mine drags into defensive troops. Barracks and engineering bay floating out to want to nice vision on Kiko's part, which could negate the advantage of these dropships, and it is going to be a slew. So it looks like we've got. Four siege tanks and four vultures. A lot of troops making their way across. Kiko just now getting his fifth factory. He's down 20 supply. His own dropship being created now. And now, does... Is there a window? Go ahead and see if there... Okay, it looks like the dropships have been spotted. We see them. Does Kiko see them? And how does he respond? He needs to get a lot of troops now in the upper right hand corner immediately. But here's the thing, even upon spotting that, I don't know that he has enough troops. He's gonna go for a counter drop. So he got three drop ships worth there. Kiko, are you kidding me? Grabbing another command center at the six o'clock location, a very aggressive play, a single rate finding a siege tank out here, but this drop Looks like it could be devastating. Fortunately, so able to wipe that out. These dropships going to, yeah, redirect. So despite us seeing it, it looks like Kiko did not see it or respond. SCVs coming off the line, battle SCVs trying to defend. Also, turning out, dropping some mines. This siege tank easily going to get, well, never mind. It thought, was that a dud? Okay, that siege tank quickly wiped out. The SCV is defending themselves well, but this is allowing Tucson to maintain that superior worker count, clearing out this third. Vulture is able to get additional kills on top of this. Also, he knows that dropships are in the air for Kiko. So now Kiko, maybe he can sneak back into this. He has grabbed an additional base. Might not want to overproduce SCVs here. Tucson has his exact SCV count that he's looking for. Still no additional factories for either player. This space has been grabbed, but not yet saturated. And right now, yeah, Tucson, I think, going for the wiser long-term play and just holding the three bases, establishing his position. His, all of his dropships got out of here. He's got his own turret setting up to go ahead and defend against any sort of counter drop from Kiko. And he's mounting a large attack force, it looks like, to the north. To go ahead and position and take that upper left hand. So he's 
playing the long game, he's like, you can go ahead and take your fourth a little bit earlier with your inferior SCV count. Not even mining at this base. So it's not really an advantage. I'm going to go ahead and press forward. Cut off the entire top part of the map. And I'm just going to win in the long-term game of attrition in map control. So now he's going to go ahead and grab that 10 o'clock position. Huge amount of troops engaging to the north. Pico staging looks like transferring SCVs to the south. And he, because of that fear troop count for such a long period of time, he just doesn't have enough to defend this. So it might end up losing this upper right-hand corner. And even if he doesn't lose it, Dusan doesn't need to press this issue. He can go ahead and siege up right here. He's well defended to the south. He still has those dropships that can punch on something. So going to go ahead and just leave his vultures there, it looks like. Pico having some troops. So positioning right there, forcing some troops forward, and now re-engaging the barracks still floating and seeing absolutely everything. It looks like that Wraith finally going to get take care of that. Additional factories popping down. A lot of dropships being built by Kiko, but honestly, he just doesn't have the raw factory count, in my opinion, to utilize them. Because there's just a huge amount of troops at multiple locations. Kiko potentially going to get run over to the south, so Tucson drawing the troops to the north. So you got this skeleton crew to the north. You've got these sea shanks to the south. Dropships that are potentially in... Looks like Tucson just, yeah, looking for the weak point. Walk back and forth. Walking back and forth and forcing Kiko to engage at multiple locations. Kiko grabbing yet another expansion. At the inside 12. Very brave considering troops were just there. Perhaps he's feeling like, okay, you're moving out of position. And I think this is more a let's hurry up and cut the map in half and get what's ours sort of situation here. But in the meantime, Tucson hitting near 200 supply. He's going to be in a position to go ahead and bully away around, and Kiko's still down. However, one advantage is Kiko's troops just hit harder. Level 2 weapons, and unseaged, Tucson walking forward. So rather than leading with dropships, ends up losing a few siege tanks there. Superior factory count for Tucson as well, so he can go ahead and throw those troops away and rebuild them fairly rapidly. But if he settles, if he just settles and doesn't push things, he does have the upgrade advantage. He is, he has larger portion of the map right now. He can go ahead and take this base at leisure. And it could end up in a situation where if Tucson doesn't get a move on, doesn't drop, doesn't take something, he could end up in a situation where Kiko is able to starve him out over the long term. I'm not sure I like the command center being dropped with really, with no ability to really utilize that base. There's four mining bases already that are fully saturated. You've got, again, all these dropships potentially that aren't being utilized and aren't on the defense. Concerns me a bit as well. But right now, Tucson building in more dropships himself. The supply count is starting to narrow. Some vultures just getting annihilated to the north. So all of a sudden, things have flipped. The advantages early for Tucson have dissipated. Kiko now mining off a superior troop count. Hearing action someplace, but I can't exactly figure out where it's happening. I'm wondering if it's just troops sliding across here. But now, you can just hear that flurry of commsats on both sides. Both players looking for a defensive hole. Natural expansion mining out for Tucson. Big troop drop moving over the ridge. Looking to once again hit this upper right-hand corner. Pico with his own drop ships there. Ready to engage. I think the commsat found the drop ship, so Tucson's going to have to find another angle. Tucson with the larger bank. Which is not an insignificant thing right this second. Being up 3,000 minerals could be the difference in this match. Nice turret layout here from Tucson, and I'm almost wondering if we're going to start seeing a move to battle cruisers from both these players. Second starport being dropped. Double, triple armory, so we're definitely going to see a movement 
towards air. Kiko able to find some ground room, working on the dropship's opposite side. However, that means these are empty, which is opening up a window for Tucson to maybe go for a counter drop. So Kiko might need to load up rapidly. Let's see if Tucson... No, he's not going to opt to be, get aggressive with this. Looks like he wants to reload and re-engage. Trap these troops in. Play from there. Very thin window. You can see the siege tanks can range this direction. So now trying to drop on absolutely everything. And yeah, it looks like Tucson going to be able to wipe the rest of this out. Loses a dropship as well. Two dropships as well. And I think the dropships, yeah, the dropships still stand for Tucson. Both players dead even, though. Upgrades even. But right this second, Kiko holds, I think, superior purchase. Let's go ahead and get a base count. So natural expansion looking thin, main looking thin. Three bases up otherwise. Open available base here. Some siege tanks. Wow. Siege tank range sometimes just feels unfair. Even a TVT. Look at the range it's got. Inside 12. So let's get a. Let's talk about potential base count. Here momentarily. TVT. I'm just going to ignore some of the explosions so we can just get. Just so we can see how things are laid out here. We got three bases in the upper left hand corner that are mining. That's going to basically be four mining bases. We got four mining bases for Kiko as well. And the potential additional base here in the inside right position. Middle base. I mean, is it going to come down to the middle base? It could potentially come down to the middle base. So, this could be the X Factor base for Kiko that he's still not mining at. The middle could come, could be a factor here. And otherwise, Kiko all of a sudden in a supply lead for the first time. And you can see he's already thinking about this. He's like, okay, all I need to do is hold middle. Eventually take this bottom right-hand corner, which will be an easier afterthought. He's fielding a handful of Wraith. We do have double starport being dropped. I think Tucson pausing right now to go ahead and start making his transition to battle cruisers. Might be able to catch Kiko off guard. I don't see any movements. Oh, so he's got double control tower, but it looks like he's already on top of the battle cruiser race. Going to be behind in upgrades, though, because these armories are coming down a little bit later. But the other trick of it is, is whose battle cruisers come out first? Who has the superior amount of Yamato for exchanges? Tucson starting to mine the upper left-hand corner. And now this is going to be, wow, this is going to turn into a very long TVT indeed. Buckle up, ladies and gentlemen. So my, the main just mining out, natural expansion mining out for Kiko. Kiko taking the middle now as well. Wow. Talk about brave. So he is all over the place, dropping missile turrets, aggressively mining. The banks are dead even. First two, first three battle cruisers out for Kiko. So he's going to have a superior battle cruiser count, and that also means them coming out a little bit earlier means uh, Yamato is going to be there earlier. Physics Labs already dropped. I think Yamato has already been researched. Some Wraith. I think intentionally suiciding forward to get a look at the turret counts to the north. These dropships are still a factor. But Tucson with an inferior troop count needs to worry about weaving through these turrets to the north. Might have found an open lane, though. He needs to do something with this. I'm sure he's dropped some commsat. I don't know if he's... Let's see if... He might have dropped some commsat to go ahead and confirm that that middle of the map has been taken. And so now these dropships are actually a bit of a liability because this is supply that is not battle cruisers. That is not a lot else. And Kiko potentially is leaving some troops back. He's also got these battle cruisers that have been spotted to potentially respond to any location these dropships move to. So it's a little bit of a. It's an interesting game here where Tucson wants to drop and wants to actually lose the supply. But at the same time, wants to get value for what he's going to unload. Moving to the north, and you can see he's just, I think, trying to weave and drop out of Comsat. Wonder if Kiko is like, so he's Comsatting the main. I wonder if he's, yeah, and he's still Comsatting those 
You just see the game. It's like comps at them, see where they're at. Know where to put them. Barracks floating out the middle. There is a single rate to go ahead and engage that. This might be the first confirmatory moment of like, oh yeah, that middle base might in fact be taken. The dropships have made the way to the upper right. And this might be a situation where I think the dropships might have died earlier for Kiko, and all of a sudden that's an advantage. Because he might have more free supply to plop into battle cruisers and tanks. It looks like there is at least a dropship left that's migrating SCVs around. Actually, I wonder if he wants to suicide drop these SCVs. Honestly, I would just send this dropship once they're out across the map to go ahead and open up some supply here. Kiko preserving his APM. Like, let's go ahead and keep our hands relaxed. This is going to be a long game. Battlecruisers now moving out. Where are the battlecruisers on the opposite side? Let's see if I can find where the battlecruisers are. Engineering Bay floating forward, going ahead and giving some damage here to the north. Still waiting to see... Okay, nice fleet. How many battlecruisers are we looking at? Six? We got six on this side. We got just three on the opposite side. Looks like there are going to be two additional joining. But there's also, keep in mind, Yamato in this. And I kind of want to see the weapons upgrades. It looks like the weapons upgrades and armor upgrades are leading on Tucson's side. The Sea Shank sneaking forward, actually able to take out the refinery. Which I would usually say is like a big deal, but right now I'm not sure that it is. Battlecruiser's now dropping in the middle. Tucson wanting to stop this base. Yamato dropping. Flurry of Yamato as the battlecruisers are there to defend. Pico holding back, losing some additional troops. It looks like the Siege Shank's going to reposition. 10k bank on both sides. Still some Goliaths able to do some damage. More dropships going to go ahead and field forward to try to go for a pincer attack. Siege Shank's behind this. Kiko's a Kiko can go ahead and lose these SCVs. Reload, it looks like, immediately. He just needs to make sure he holds this base and mines it out. Yeah, he just moved his SCVs, it looks like, to, to the north. In fact, I wouldn't even bother rebuilding those SCVs at this stage. Battlecruiser's being... Actually, if he loses enough troops, it's a benefit because he can go ahead and fill it in with another, another Battlecruiser. Dropships again moving to the north. Tucson wanting to hold on to them and utilize. But really, I feel like late game Yamato is so... I don't know. This is where... This is where I'm not an experienced TVT player. And I would love to hear from the audience. Basically, who... Would you rather have Yamato or would you have the, rather have the dropships? The dropships being spotted by this engineering bay. It looks like now they're finally going to dive in. Potentially. So they're pocketing in the upper right hand corner. SCV's going down to go ahead and group repair, repair the battlecruisers there. Yeah, finally sacrificing some of these. They're empty. So one of them's still going to survive here. But that's going to open up the supply for Kiko to go ahead. And adjust. And it looks like, yeah, he's going ahead. I like this play from Tucson. He's now realizing the situation, going ahead and sacking a lot of his SCVs. He's like, I got a sizable enough bank. I need superior troop counts. Kiko, recognizing the situation, going to go ahead and do the same on the opposite side. So sending out troops they don't want to go ahead and exchange them for the bigger, beefier units. Science Hustle being added. EMP can be a big X factor in these matches. And actually, there are a few dropships out here for Kiko. Didn't realize this. I've missed them this entire time. So let's see if they, if he realizes that. Be able to push that. Battle cruisers engaging the middle of the map. It's going to be four versus six. Never mind. Change those odds. Eight versus nine. But also Yamato being dropped. One of the battle cruisers getting wiped out immediately. One being picked off the opposite side. There is SCVs. On Kiko's side to provide some group repair support, there's also the turrets underneath. Turret taking some damage. Tucson doesn't like it, so he's going to back off. He's going to pick off that siege tank. Looking for angles. Picks off a siege tank. More missile turrets being dropped. This is now... This is the big boys game now. 
Battlecruiser versus Battlecruiser. Science vessel nearby to potentially drop an EMP. Another shirt getting picked off. Also, superior armor, so Tucson's Battlecruiser is a little bit beefier. You can believe that. SCV's moving to the north to go ahead and group repair. Look at these banks. Monopoly indeed. Battlecruiser is now to the north for Tucson. He seems to be the aggressor, and he needs to be the aggressor here. If he just lets things languish, he's going to end up paying for it in basically getting starved out. Pico with the superior bank now. Huge amount. Huge advantage of gas. Looks like he's continually be, been able to deny this. Tucson trying to get in position maybe to take out these siege tanks to the north to open up that gas there. Some more SCVs being sacrificed to the south. Flurry of comps at either direction. And actually, I got to give it to Kiko. Because he did all this with just six factories the entire game. Versus... What is this? Eight? Seven? Seven on the opposite side, I think. Just seven. And he was honestly at an inferior factory count for long periods of time. Another Yamato going to get dropped. One of those things where it's, it's kind of a... You ever see one of those slap fights where it's like the guy just has to sit there and like get hit in the face? The other guy comes up and hits the other guy in the face. And they both kind of regather themselves. And it's just who gets knocked out first by slaps. That's what late game TVT feels like to me at times. Where it's, you know, the Yamato comes up, slaps a battlecruiser. Yamato moves the other, battlecruisers move back the other direction, drop a Yamato, and every once in a while someone will get the EMP, which is like that big slap, which causes them to stagger. Siege tank. Two siege tanks picked off. And group repair. That might open up this Vespine Geyser. For Tucson. Right now that's the biggest gap here. This Kiko just has a huge amount of gas. And while it was ignoring all that from the north. Looks like additional battle cruisers were able to sneak in. And they're going to be able to wipe out Kiko's base. In the middle. Kiko can easily rebuild that though. As long as he holds this territory and keeps it out of Tucson's hands. He will end up winning. Eventually, and he still hasn't utilized this base. So right now, Tucson. Seeing those battle cruisers out of position, looking to engage. This is going to turn into a big fight. Several battle cruisers wiped out, giving Kiko a big advantage. Now he's going to float and take out some siege tanks as well. Which means more siege tanks can come in here as an afterthought, just get repositioned from some location. Did those dropships get wiped out? Doesn't look like those dropships got wiped out yet. Tucson's starting to mine in the upper left. He's down to two mining bases. Two mining bases as well for Hiko. But again, eventually he can just migrate and take that third. More battlecruiser slap fights here to the north. Hiko, with the advantage, does manage to sneak out one damaged battlecruiser. But with the superior count right now, it could move up and do more damage if he wanted to. SCV's... More SCVs looking to sacrifice themselves, wandering forward. Tucson with a sizable enough bank where, why not? Siege tanks repositioned to go ahead and deny that gas. And right now, yeah, Kiko holds. He's continually denied this gas. This is Tucson's, in theory, so these are Tucson's last mining bases. The middle being re-grabbed by Kiko. And having this double gas in the middle is actually really significant. Something that should not be underestimated. Also, big factor here, I haven't seen a science vessel out yet for Tucson. And he's kept those battlecruisers very grouped up. Looks like he's filtering more battlecruisers on his end. Are we at full upgrades now? Siege tank's still at 2-1, 3-2. So superior troop count there. Got 3 2, and I need to find an air unit. Where are they? Where are they? 3 3 across the board for Tucson. Dropships finally being sacrificed. 
trying to get that valuable scouting information as well. Still one dropship left for Kiko. Let me see if I can get a good look at the troop count here. We got 10 battle cruisers, 11, 12 plus one. So control group plus one. Control group plus two, it looks like. So slight superior count there. However, there's a science vessel and it's really hard to not bunch up battle cruisers, as you can see. Like EMP can absolutely hit every single one of them. Are there more battle cruisers? More battle cruisers are starting to field out. So it looks like Tucson at the end of the day gonna have a superior battle cruiser count. However, positional control and look at all these turrets. Turrets absolutely everywhere. Another dropship. Turrets need something to support. Battlecruiser is going to make their way this direction. It looks like Tucson moving his battlecruisers there. This could be a big shift in events. If he can just move in and hold. Still AC. Oh, it looks like there's still a siege tank hiding underneath there. Battlecruisers. For Kiko's defense, being very, very cautious and patient. Again, realizing that he doesn't even need to mine out of this base. He just needs to make sure that Tucson doesn't take it. Big EMP! Ho! Is Kiko going to capitalize, though? No, he's just going to let the command center burn. I would have engaged immediately. Drop your mottos. So Kiko now losing the center of the map. Tucson carving that out. Making no motions to take it himself, just wanting to deny it to Kiko on this end. A lot of turrets, yeah, and this actually forces turrets to get dropped in other locations. This could be a critical edge here because there is a superior siege tank count. So like a drop of a couple Yamatos here and a siege tank move. Could be an opportunity for Kiko. He's instead going to move. He's like, okay, you're going to work on the middle of the base. I EMP'd your troops. I know I have superior motto. I'm going to go take out your mining base as well. Thinking that might have been a floated command center, but no. Turret's not there quite yet. And now, Kiko can just go ahead and camp this northern location. Keep eyes on the middle. And Tucson's down to one mining base. Although he has, I think cleverly, cleared out more SCVs for himself to allow himself a superior battlecruiser fleet. SCVs now dropping, landing turrets in the middle. This might be Tucson's... I don't even know if I want to call it a comeback, but this... Starting to seize the middle. And if he can seize and hold the middle... That might be sufficient. Kind of retake this now. So basically this base functions similar to this base. Where it's like, okay, I can take that as an afterthought. I'm going to mine the middle. Get more out of it than Kiko does. And just end up winning long term overall. And this is, oof, this is starting to look like World War One style stuff. The trenches have been drawn. SCVs now being sacrificed on Kiko's side. To go ahead and free up some more supply. Brave SCVs. How would you like that if you were like in the Terran army where they're like, yeah, we literally need you to just run into the enemy siege tanks and die because we can't, we really don't want to feed you anymore. So just go out, splatter yourself. They, they don't even let them retire. They're like, nope, you need to go out and explode. We need you to dive headlong into the enemy. That is what you're supposed to do. Ugh. The wheat that we have to put in your mouth, it needs to be turned into metal for more battle cruisers. So just just run out and die. And it's like, can I just like, you know, go off planet or something? We can't spray the dropships. You even breathing here is taking up atmosphere on our side. Poor SCVs. Really? And they're the only worker like I, I've never seen a PvP where the probes go get sacrificed. Drones are basically amalgamous matter themselves right like they turn into anything they want they're really if you think about it 
the drones are like the ultimate worker because they can turn into a hatchery which then turns into hydralisks. Nice defense matrix. Battle crews are getting a little bit over. So yeah, drones really like... Ooh, a couple peace chains getting wiped out as well. Drones gotta be the happiest workers, I guess. But an SCV is obviously the most punished. The ones that end up getting sacrificed. This is a lot of battle cruisers here in the middle of the map. I think this is nearly... I don't know if this is two control groups or control group plus eight. It's hard to get a good count. <clears throat> but Tucson, slowly moving forward. There is a command center nearby to go ahead and seize that territory. And yeah, we're, we're in for a long one. And a lot of combat in the background. A bit like music. Still two dropships that Kiko, I'm not sure if he realizes these are here or if he just wanted to keep them around. And Tucson doing a really good job of finding, despite not having the science vessels, finding pocket locations. Oof, EMP hits. These EMPs have hit, but really, Kiko hasn't gotten a lot out of it. Hasn't been able to drop counter... On those big EMP hits, he, uh... I mean, aside from when he moved to the north and took out that base, which was a nice maneuver. But now losing complete control over the southern wedge. That sounds so official. The southern wedge. But plenty of science vessels dropping that EMP. Maybe he's just concerned that he doesn't have enough battle cruisers at the end of the day to really punish. So now, as things line up, one mining base left for Tucson. This base looks like it's going to mine out for Kiko. He's now finally opting to grab that command center in the bottom right and start mining there. Distance, <laughs> just trying to get the gas for Tucson in the middle. Banks, a little bit more gas for Tucson, a little bit more minerals for Kiko. More siege shanks being wiped out to the south. I don't know if that is advantageous or not though, because without making a run, that might just open up more supply to get more battle cruisers. Three science vessels, which I think is a little bit overkill, honestly. Is that, yeah, three. I think two would be sufficient. But now Tucson going ahead and dropping the command center in the middle of the map. So at the 42 minute mark, feels like things are slightly sweeping into Tucson's favor. And yeah, starting to march to the south. Pico playing very passively with his battle cruisers back here. And this is trouble because if Tucson makes a run at this base, that will be game. How many tanks do we have here? Four tanks underneath. Six tanks otherwise. Some EMPs being dropped. Yeah, if Tucson slows plays this, lost a siege tank there. But if he slow plays this, he could punch through. And even if he doesn't punch through, now he's got the command center in the middle of the map. The name of this map is Monopoly. And he has the Monopoly on the troops. Thank you for the raid, 80s Molt, by the way. Looks like there's a bit of a pause. Probably to use the restroom or something along those lines. I get it. Always interesting to watch, like, what ends up overlapping what as the air fleets. Like, I wonder how the algorithm works to where it's like, this one's underneath, this one's above. In the groupings. Little random thoughts I have in the middle of these longer matches. You saw now establishing that second gas in the middle. And the battle lines starting to wear thin on both ends. More siege tanks reinforcing to the south for Kiko, knowing that he desperately needs to maintain this inside, what do I want to call this? The inside 4 o'clock location. Still two bases left. One base that Tucson can take almost as an, after, an afterthought. And he's holding the middle. So now it is up to Kiko to make moves. To wrest control out of Tucson's hands. It looks like he's going ahead and dropping additional starports. 
So he's definitely thinking about getting aggressive. But while those troops are out of position, losing more siege tanks to the south. But it, the supply count never shifted for Kiko, which means he built something immediately. I'm trying to find out. Looks like he's just packing on some additional siege tanks. Superior gas for Tucson, right this second. Science vessel count, still superior. Tucson has more troops, though, is pressing into the north, and Kiko, once again, not that... He's not dedicating these battle cruisers to this assault. Finally, one battle cruiser engaging to the north. It gets wiped out, sees that that base has been taken. These siege tanks now exposed, so they're going to get cleared out. There are Goliaths to support underneath. And all of a sudden, Tucson caught a little bit out of position, loses all of his siege tanks to pressure that southern wedge. Kiko no longer mining minerals. I want to try to get a look at the starport count. Oof. Okay, so we got eight, six, seven. So we got seven down here. Two, three, four, five, five, six, seven. Seven versus seven as far as being able to replenish. The mineral's starting to drop a bit. We're below 10k on both sides. And critically, Pico mined out to the north. An additional base that can be grabbed now for Tucson. He's still mining in the upper left. And I think he might have, he's finally added a science vessel on. And so Kiko, despite landing some amazing EMPs here and there, really not pressing the battle either direction to capitalize. And he's just sitting as gas is being mined in the middle. And these minerals can be grabbed. Uh, honestly, I would just start mining here if I was Tucson. EMP drop. He's able to get the science vessel in counter. But no Yamato here. Is Tucson going to get aggressive with this? I feel like he has more, I mean, look at all these turrets. He has more of a uh, positional advantage to do so. Additional turrets being dropped in the middle. Command center nearby. Looks like he's going to make a run at it. Few Yamatos being dropped. First battle cruiser wiped out. No counter Yamatos. the small victories. Looking for the moves. We got three siege tanks to the north here. Six siege tanks that could potentially pressure through. Tucson. And as I say that, it looks like some of those siege tanks are potentially going to get wiped out. Both players just kind of maneuvering around one another. But kiko has got to make something happen. Because he is now mined out at the inside 12 o'clock location. Tucson has three bases to his name. And Kiko is effectively down to one. So if things persist, Kiko will end up running out of minerals in the long haul. And given the positions, it seems like Tucson's just... He's got turrets all over the middle. He doesn't really need to defend anything this direction. Some turrets have been planted inside 3 o'clock location, just in case the battlecruisers made their way that way. But Tucson looking to yap peck at that 9 o'clock wall. Might even be able to get a hop, skip, and a jump from there right into Kiko's main. Tucson pressing forward, realizing he has minerals to spare. Ooh, one battle cruiser getting a little bit out of control. Looks like it's going to lose its life. Does drop a Yamato. Battle cruiser for a siege tank, not the best exchange, though. 
And again, Kiko. Yeah, keeping these battle cruisers back. Taking the damages. And Tucson is long. If, even if he is taking out turrets, because he has that superior economy to work with behind this, he's in a more comfortable position. He can keep dropping these Yamatos, keep having these siege tanks picking off turrets, just whittle into Kiko's mineral count. Because Kiko is now, yeah, he's got one base worth of minerals left. And right now, yeah, Tucson moving with impunity. Battlecruiser is completely out of position to defend this. So the 6 o'clock location completely breached, opening up troop movements along this edge. Science vessels rushing forward, maybe hoping to hit an EMP. But now, with near even or superior Battlecruiser counts from Tucson on the opposite side of the map, he can maybe bully his way to the south. Take out the last binding base from Kiko, at which point it would certainly be GG. Just feels like Kiko is having to defend too much territory. He's on the defense and he needs to be the aggressor. Because three bases are still available for Tucson. Tucson now growing that mineral gap. And the gas gap has a larger bank. So Kiko needs to make moves. I think he's just hoping that Tucson will make some sort of massive positional blunder, but I don't see that happening. Turret's now being cleared out to the north. The battlecruiser's not in position to engage. And this is mineral more minerals lost for Kiko, first of all, but secondarily, this is going to open up potential mining to maybe wipe out these siege tanks that are planted underneath these engineering bays to the north then open up mining should that be necessary I'm not saying 7,000 minerals is broke but right now Tucson uh, looking at a lot of metrics here in a really good position Higo needs to make a move still has these two dropships And yeah, Tucson just making rounds. Moving to the north, drawing the fleet there, pulling back south, taking out some siege tanks. Just completely catching Kiko off guard. Kiko trying to keep up. But now, yeah, it looks like he's sweeping around. He wants to go ahead and make a shot at the the siege tanks that are here, but the battle cruisers aren't that far behind. And honestly, I feel like Tucson would be happy to go ahead and engage. Some shield battery dropped. Shield battery? Yeah. <laughs> Defense matrix dropped. Love that one. I'm actually curious how many active gases there are as well. I think everything's depleted. Versus the active gas here we have from Tucson. This is going to be an active gas once it's available. So Tucson, looking for an angle, has just been migrating back and forth, pecking away at Kiko. Kiko no longer has minerals, or no longer has the mineral lead. He has some minerals, but it's just kind of trickling in. Tucson with a 10k bank, so he's got 4,000 bank advantage, which is a lot of battle cruisers. And Kiko needs to make one big push someplace and just win a battle. Maybe dropping some EMP, getting some Yamato down will make it happen. Testing these lines, Tucson's done a fantastic job of also dropping comps that right on top of the battle cruisers to keep an eye as you can see and Kiko keeps drawing these battle cruisers back rather than keeping them active on the front line
So Kiko kind of, in poker, there's that term where you just sit on your, where you end up losing just because you have to place your, buy, your blind bet and you never end up playing. Huge EMP from Tucson as well. Ugh, that felt like a nail in the coffin to me. Looking for a counter EMP. Does manage to pick off EMP some of the battle cruisers. I don't think he managed to hit quite as many though. Surprised he actually had a science vessel left to EMP with. Tucson now moving to the north. Knowing that some of the a lot of this Yamato is gone. And he's going to stage forward to go ahead and be able to reclaim this base. Now Kiko going for a move. With no Yamato, just going to dive into these turrets. See if these siege tanks engage or just back off. Turrets cleared. Kiko trying to pull back. Eating a lot of fire, though. SCV's rapidly looking to group repair, and they need to hurry. Because Tucson's starting to dive in from the opposite location. Command center being grabbed now that everything was clear out to the north. So a bit of clearance happening, but now Tucson looking for a fight. Counter EMP. Lands on EMP. So a little bit of a win there for Kiko, but nothing that's going to honestly give him the match. This is a big shift in events as well. Tucson able to reestablish and actually even get siege tanks up to defend at that 12 o'clock base. So now he's running on two bases, including this very mineral-rich middle base. I should say gas-rich more than mineral-rich. And Kiko's down to just a single mining base. Siege tanks re-engaging over one another. And Tucson pressing forward, able to pick off some additional engineering base. Yeah, I think Tucson's got this locked. 4k minerals, up 5k gas. Maybe with a big dive across everything to the upper left. Oh, and there's a bunch of starports behind this as well. He can rebuild this fleet near immediately. Where I do not believe... Also, it just you can see with the hot king, these starports are all over the place for Kiko, so it's just be a little bit more difficult to replenish the attack forces. I think I missed another EMP. Tucson attacking with SCVs. So we're seeing some late game SCV versus SCV battle action. These, wow. Seeing things that most SCVs never see, able to walk right into his opponent's base. EMPing, but only catching it looks like a sliver of the battlecruiser force. Yeah, now it looks like Kiko's just going to end up mining himself out. He's going to have an inferior fleet, an inferior ability to rebuild. And Tucson now moving some siege tanks. Just going to walk him to the south. Honestly, can just walk him to this last mining base. And the battlecruisers, if they draw off, could get engaged mid-map. Yeah, they just have to watch this happen. Yeah, Kiko in a desperate situation. Had the troops to maybe gun for it at some point. But instead, now Tucson is slowly whittling him down. And critically taking out yet another starport. Which is going to give him the ability, if he ends up trading VCs, to just exchange them very, very rapidly. Battlecruisers now grouping up to the north for Kiko, but this feels like it's too little too late.
Battle Cruiser, have they lost track? I'm wondering if Tucson lost track or he just doesn't care. Battle Cruiser's now engaging. Are they going to turn around? Now turning around. Almost a moment where Kiko might have been able to get something accomplished. One Battle Cruiser now engaging these Siege Shanks to the south. Command Center's been wiped out. Siege Shanks walking in. Another big EMP. Kiko dropping under 6k. Double the bank for Tucson. Yamato's flurrying. This might be a big win for Kiko. And all of a sudden, after that EMP dropping, a flurry of EMPs, or sorry, a flurry of Yamato's wiping out a good portion of Tucson's attack force. He's driving forward. But you saw that bank drop. All of a sudden, those battle cruisers being rebuilt near instantly. Tucson drawing these battle cruisers into his turret range. How many are left after this? A much larger fleet for Kiko at the end of all this. But with the superior battle cruisers, he needs to hurry up and do something, take something out. Whether it be this command center, the middle of the map, something. Because immediately triggered was a rebuild of all of these battle cruisers. You can see that supply. Look at this flurry of battle cruisers being rebuilt nigh instantaneously. Tucson all of a sudden down to 1k minerals. So as I was saying, I thought it might be Tucson's match. Now he's got some mining to do. More troops moving out, getting wiped out. Thing is, is Tucson can afford to do this? Not sure that Kiko can. But nice big exchange, and wow, that was a huge shift in events. Goliath's walking forward. They want to just go ahead and maybe go battlecruiser hunting, trying to clear out some turrets. The fleet's starting to fill in once again. And Kiko get, uh, once again holding and not pressing forward into this. Maybe if he can get one more big exchange like that, he can pull ahead, but he needs to wipe out one of these bases. Tucson looking to engage to the north. I have going to get instantly splatted here. Supply count even again, but keep in mind this, a lot of these battle cruisers are still being built for Tucson. Kiko re-repairing. All of a sudden, Kiko with a mineral count lead. He can go ahead and refilter. Tucson needs to mine minerals. He has bases to do it at, but there's a lot of stuff in the way. Not exactly efficient mining. Epic match. We have passed the one hour mark. Kiko still needs to press forward and get something done. Up 2,000 minerals. Tucson, on the other hand, can't afford to make a mistake because he's not going to be able to refill that battle cruiser count as rapidly as Kiko now. Because Kiko has that 4,000 mineral bank to replenish rapidly. So could be another wait for Tucson to go ahead and get that mineral grouping up before he decides to re-engage. But I don't really see him making any motions to grab these minerals. He's holding them, but he's not really utilizing them. Instead, he's just packed on gas. Kiko re-engaging to the north. I have no idea who has the superior battlecruiser count. This battlecruiser eating a shot. Eating two shots. Looks like it's going to get wiped out. Supply count didn't even move. Saw that instant rebuild. I wonder if there's like a... Yeah, they're queued. That's what it is. So Tucson even has these queued. Should something get wiped out. 
where we have no Q on the opposite side. That's where a lot of those minerals went. So Tucson, once he has all of his battle cruisers in a row, can go ahead and make another push. Sea Shank finally getting taken out to the south. Was able to wreak a bit of havoc down there. But Tucson, still not mining minerals. He's got the minerals there. This gas has now been depleted. Yeah, still not grabbing the good blue stuff. He's got it available. Single Siege Chank and a Goliath in a dropship nearby. Battlecruisers grouping up to the north. So we are going to see a huge battle at the 12 o'clock. Yamato's going off much earlier for Kiko rather than Tucson. The focus fire looks a little bit better for Tucson, however. And it looks like Tucson is going to win this battle cruiser engagement to the north. However, Goliath's pecking away on that southern edge. Kiko's supply, you can see how much supply was in these battle cruisers. And Tucson with the re with the insta Q, those battle cruisers immediately filtering back in. And with that exchange, Tucson gonna go ahead and back up near Atom Minerals. Kiko still has minerals to work with, finally remining minerals. Tucson in just a moment is gonna have a much superior battle cruiser count and can start bullying his way around the map. But he does need to get a move on. And now, yeah, now mining. Goliath siege tanks. Pressing in to take that 12 o'clock. And nothing to stop them right now. Troops in flight. A lot of Goliaths underneath. It was a wise decision from Tucson to go ahead and engage to the 12 o'clock, realizing this is a pure 12, uh, Goliath count. So choosing to engage in a location where the Goliaths wouldn't be able to be a factor. Yeah, Tucson now starting to carve into Kiko. Kiko maybe has one last stand in him someplace. I lost track of the battle cruisers. Huge supply lead for Tucson. Looks like the battle cruisers were kind of separated out. Being repaired. Transcend is being picked out of the air. Supply dropping now for Kiko. Or base supply, I should say. So now Tucson can go ahead and sit in mine. Another EMP taking out that science vessel. I don't think it got a counter EMP off. And Kiko shelling up. He's I don't even know that he's gonna have enough to get back to max supply where Tucson is. So Tucson, yeah, he's got this game after that last exchange. Although, can't afford to lose battlecruisers like that. Literally can't afford. So even though Tucson a little bit behind in the minerals, not fully indicative of the situation here. A lot of comps at, where are, I thought they were, there they are. The Battlecruiser is also not really cohesive right now for Kiko. I think he's just trying to buy himself some time. Time is not in his favor, though. For large portions of this game, I felt that Kiko had this on lock. But with that one day exchange, and with a big engagement to the north. Oh! Back up, back up, back up. 
Tucson now able to take a commanding lead. More battle cruisers filtering in. I think you might have the same problem I do as a caster, where it's really hard to tell when they're bunched up what the count is. That actually might be another reason strategically to keep the battle cruisers all over the map. This is so that there's not a full control. Harder to, for Tucson to get a good lock count as far as how many battle cruisers on the opposite side. Goliath engaging. Tucson trying to reinforce to the south. Looking to regroup. Is he going to drop some EMPs as well? The EMPs have been better from Kiko overall. Especially on the initial engagements. Tucson with a sliver of a mineral lead now. And that will be the case the rest of this map, regardless of the outcome. Comsats on both sides. EMP getting dropped. Another battlecruiser getting taken out. Tucson being a little bit sloppy now. But he does have more battlecruisers moving up to reinforce. He can afford to be sloppy. I think he's eager to win this. And I assume as these three battlecruisers are engaging and grouping up, we will finally see... <laughs> I'm tempted to speed this up. See a push and a final attack. I think I am going to speed this up just a little bit. Just to spare the viewers. Continued push. A little bit laborious at this stage for all of us. Come on, come on, come on. I'm surprised that Kiko has not engaged or GG'd at this stage. Still getting pressed back. Battlecruiser still sitting back. More peeking forward. Here we go. Big engagement. Siege tanks now at the natural expansion. Tucson drawing the battlecruisers back. Now going for the full engage. And Tucson just has a superior battle cruiser count overall. Still has the minerals behind this. Kiko has nowhere to run. There's GG. Epic TVT. Hope you guys enjoyed it. <laughs> Thanks for listening.